Now, to me, I think it is very important to establish some kind of basic fundamental wrestling truths when it comes to who should or shouldn't be world champion, when it should or shouldn't happen. This could apply AEW, WWE, really doesn't matter. Number one, they actually have to be over. They have to be over, at least with the core audience, if nothing else. If you're trying to force it, but they're not really there, it's not going to work, so you don't do it. Number two, not everybody needs to be world champion. Not everybody should be world champion. And we have far too many people that don't really deserve a top spot be world champion. Granted, that is much more of a problem with WWE in its recent years, but fair enough. Also, not every world championship reign should be the same length or have the same feel or always be the same type of person at the top. Everybody agree with that? Also, there should be different journeys. Some people get it on the first try. Some people may not. Some might get it the second time or the third try or the fourth or the fifth or it might take years. Again, variety, different. Not every path and journey and story should or can be the same. So I don't want to be overly dismissive of counter viewpoints because it is fair to talk about some other things. That said, you can listen to other viewpoints and call them out for how stupid they really are and how out of touch they really are and how ridiculous they really are. And when I saw at the beginning of this week what Bully Ray said about Hangman Page and whether or not it was the time for him to take that world title from Kenny Omega and he said no, it was stupid. I want to give full air time to what Bully Ray said so that way I can then talk about just how fucking stupid what he said was. Because this is unbelievably god-awful dumb. Let me go ahead and quote this here. So he was on an interview. Where the fuck was he being interviewed? Or no, it was on his uh, busted open radio show. I'm so sorry. He shared his belief. I'm reading this from sescoops.com. It was the first thing I've searched on Twitter to see, okay, where, do, where can I find the actual article that quotes him? So that's where I'm getting it from. Um, Bully shared his belief that AEW needs to get more heat on this angle before Hangman, Hangman, you know, SE Scoops maybe should um, do a little editing before you post the article. Nonetheless, becomes a world champion. He says, and I quote, I would say to stick with Kenny right now. It's just my personal opinion. I'm not going to say if Tony decides to switch, it's the wrong decision or this or that. Listen, booking is all about feel also. There are X's and O's that go with it, but it's also all about feel. Do I feel it's the right time for Hangman? I'm going to say in nine days? No. I would like to see Kenny get more heat on Hangman or them come up with a way to get more heat on Hangman. Unquote. Look. Has everything about what they've done with this story between Omega and Hangman Page been perfectly ex executed? Absolutely fucking not. And the reality is, this is just a redirection and a reroute for something that should have happened several months ago. So I can agree that in terms of the actual heat that you're referencing here, that he's referencing here, it might not be all the way there. And yet and still, it doesn't fucking matter. Sometimes things aren't set up perfectly and you have to do it anyways. Sometimes you have to make the best out of the situation. Sometimes you have to do it even when it doesn't follow the fundamentals or it doesn't check all the boxes because it's the right fucking thing to do. Now, if you use this type of stupid ass thought process, my opinion, stupid ass thought process, and let's transplant this back to 1997. When you got to that moment where Lex Luger was fucking white hot. Now you can laugh about it now, but ain't no bullshit. He was white effing hot. And while you had this hot ass story between Sting and the NWO and Sting trying to come back at the NWO, all of a sudden here comes Luger, he's involved, and this motherfucker's over like a million bucks with the WCW fans. 
And while everything you were doing in that company in 97 was building towards Sting and Hogan for the strap at Starcade that year, you got to that point in time where you had to put the strap on Luger. You had to validate him. You had to validate what he had accomplished. You had to validate just how over he was with the fans. The fans were so emotionally invested where it got to the point where it doesn't matter what your long-term booking plans were. The moment was here. The moment was now. You have to do it. And to WCW's ever undying credit, they did it. The NWO got on board. Even Hogan's political ass got on board. And realize, well, we're just going to take it back from them at the pay-per-view six days later. But that's the damn point. They had this memorable moment that over 24 years later, we still point back to as one of the truly greatest world championship wins on cable television of all time. It goes in that category. Like that crowd on Nitro went fucking ballistic and bananas for Lex goddamn Luger of all people. And they were able to just take the strap right off of him at the pay-per-view less than a week later. It didn't derail anything from Sting and Hogan. It didn't take away from anything. It validated Luger. It validated the fans. It validated everything that they were doing. And you have to do it. And I get where maybe Bully Ray is pointing out that it's not perfect. I agree with him. But you cannot ignore, from an AEW fan standpoint right now, that Hangman Page is white fucking hot. And I don't know how much more over you expect this fucking guy to get at this point. You have to go there when the opportunity presents itself. Those of you that have watched me for years know that I have talked about this at different points in time with different people. Like we can laugh about it now, but when you go back to 2012, 2013, right in that period, Ryback in WWE was absolutely white hot and absolutely should have gotten the damn strap. I don't care if CM Punk fucking had it. I don't care if you were trying to do it, give it to The Rock. I don't care if you were trying to have Rock versus Cena at WrestleMania. Doesn't fucking matter. If you're good enough in terms of your storytelling and you're good enough from a creative standpoint, you can make it happen. And of course, WWE isn't, and that's why it didn't happen, because they were fucking stupid, and they missed an opportunity. They missed an opportunity to a point that Ryback was never the fucking same. Sometimes you only get one shot, one opportunity, and when you get it, by God, you best make the fucking most of it. And the WWE absolutely, completely screwed the pooch with Ryback. He was at a point where the fans would have been ecstatic. They would have erupted over Ryback winning the title. Just think about that for a second. And they didn't fucking do it. He was never the same. His character was never the same. Eventually, the fucking lost interest, and he was gone for the company. It was the same goddamn thing with Braun Strowman. A couple years ago, you remember, I kept talking about, you got to put the belt on Braun now, no matter what. You have to do it. It doesn't matter whether it's part of your long-term plan or not. He had gotten over to a point where you were doing so many different, unique-looking, feeling kind of things with him that the fans would have really embraced Braun as the fucking Care Bear World Champion. But, of course, they didn't fucking do it. They kept hemming and hawing, and then eventually at, what was it, 36, the COVID mania, in front of no fans, now he's brought in as a backup to Roman, and he's winning the fucking title. And the fans largely <laughs> on it. You have to strike when the iron is hot. Wade Barrett, 2010. He should have won the world championship in 2010 at some point. Period. He was the featured act in the company at that time. He had the most notable faction at the time. He was in an angle with Cena. Doesn't fucking matter. He should have been champion sometime in 2010. And when they didn't go there, he was never the fucking same. On the flip side, look at what the company did. We're talking about WWE, and I understand that, but still, with Daniel Bryan in 2014. It doesn't matter if whether it was an original plan or not. It doesn't matter if the fans forced their hands. It doesn't matter if the WWE cave. It doesn't matter if the WWE panicked. At the end of the day, they still could have went into that triple threat match at Mania and absolutely had Batista win that title. They could have. 
But they also knew that they had to strike while the iron was hot with Daniel Bryan because he was never going to be as hot for that company as he was at that time. And that was the truth. He never was before and he never was again. You can suck a dick, Brian Danielson fans, if you can't accept that. You fucking know good and well that moment, that build up to Mania 30 and Mania 30 itself is the hottest that Brian Danielson has ever been in professional wrestling, period. And if the WWE wouldn't have come off their high horse and wouldn't have decided to not be so goddamn stubborn and they would have said, you know what? No, we're not going to put the belt on him. Our plan was Batista. We're going to put it on Batista. It's going to stay on Batista. Imagine how much worse everybody would have been off for it. Although, morbidly, like, I kind of wish Batista would have won. But the point is, you have to validate these guys. What are you going to do with another three months? You're going to kill the fucking buzz for Hangman Page. Especially when you want to talk about story, Bully Ray. If we want to talk about fucking story, you know, that's ironic coming from you and all the great, I'm sure, booking advice you gave fucking ROH. How'd that go? <laughs> I also remember you being the featured part of Aces and Eights. I'm sure you had a lot of creative involvement there. And I remember that was about the fucking time I stopped watching TNA. That's the last asshole we need to be listening to about anything from a creative standpoint. But even if you want to go there, if you want to talk about story, how about the fact that literally a year ago at goddamn full gear, Kenny Omega, Hangman Page faced off, wasn't it the Eliminator Tournament final? Omega beats Hangman Page. Omega gets the future title shot, which spawned him to become the next world champion. Hangman Page was denied. What did you think coming back 12 fucking months later and sealing the deal and closing that chapter for Hangman Page makes for a tremendous story saying that you denied me that shot and opportunity a year ago and I wasn't in the right place because I had lost a friend for life. Now, at Full Gear 2021 on Saturday... I'm going to take away your life because that title means everything to you and I'm going to take it on some real cowboy shit. I can't imagine listening to the reaction of the AEW crowd and thinking, no, you know what? I'd rather have Omega keep it. Really? And I'm not here, sitting here saying that Hangman Page should be a long-term champion. He absolutely should not be. He should be a guy where it's about the chase, it's about the moment, it's about the thrill, the euphoria of it. And then you get over it very quickly and you hand it off to the next champion. Put it on a different heel like an MJF. That's the role that Hangman Page should serve here. But you need something to pop you a little bit as a company. You need something to pop that title scene. I know a lot of you love Omega, but goddamn, sometimes that motherfucker is boring as shit. And it's not always his fault. He's not always put into the best circumstances, to be clear. But not every goddamn world title run in AEW needs to be dying 10 plus months. It just doesn't. You might geek out to it because you want it to be like Japan. This isn't fucking Japan! The dynamics are different. The environment is different. Even the fan bases are different. Even though you have a lot of those similarities between those that watch AEW also love the New Japan product. It's just different. You can't always do the same shit. Having this lengthy title reign for Jericho. Oh, here's the fucking story. He was the one that faced off against Jericho. Talking about Paige. He didn't win it then. So there's a multiple year journey here, Bully Ray. How much fucking story do you need now? He's over his shit. The crowd is popping. They are emotionally invested. This is exactly not the time to get cute and over fucking think it. This is not the time to basically pull a Vince McMahon. Because if you do, if you do, I promise you, you could come back three months later and Hangman Page wins it. And it won't feel the fucking same. It won't be the same. It won't have the same type of impact. If anything, people will be agitated or pissed off. Tell me how I'm wrong. We've seen evidence of this. TNA used to do this shit. You can get me started with that goddamn company. No, there's no time to wait. There's no reason to delay. The moment in time has come Saturday. Get that belt off of goddamn Kenny Omega and put it on Hangman Page because otherwise, what the hell is the whole point then for two plus freaking years? Get some more heat on him. What more heat are you going to get? He's white hot with this crowd. Validate that and validate him. 
That's what anybody with a smart wrestling brain would do, which is clearly why Bully Ray doesn't want to do it. Stupid. 